Hey, how's it going? It's the Merg. Today we're going to talk about the nucleus of the cell. We're also going to talk about the endomembrane system, which consists of the nuclear envelope, the endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi apparatus, lysosomes, and vesicles. You'll hear this all the time, but the nucleus contains the genetic instructions to produce proteins involved in cellular function. The endomembrane system, however, consists of membrane organelles that work together to process substances throughout the life of the cell. Think of this system as a factory. The nucleus is the most prominent structure in eukaryotic cells. It stores genetic information as DNA that's well organized into small structures called chromosomes. Genes are segments of DNA that are located on the chromosome, containing information for the production of these important proteins that we'll talk about later on. These proteins, by the way, have several important functions and even help identify the cell's varied purpose. Whether the genes inside the cells are active or dormant determines a type of the cell it becomes. Chromatin is what we call DNA plus protein that make up the chromosomes. And these chromosomes have the job of passing on our genetic information from one generation to the next. Chromatin can be found either in a state of non-coiled or coiled up, and is surrounded by a fluid called neoplasm. But don't get that confused with cytoplasm. If you look really closely using a powerful microscope, you'll notice a dark spot in the nucleus. What you found in this concentration of chromatin is a region we call the nucleolus. It's where the ribosomal RNA, also known as rRNA, is made. In case you didn't know, ribosomes is the combination of rRNA and protein. The nucleus doesn't have the same environment as the rest of the interior of the cell. It's actually separated from the cytoplasm by a double-layered membrane known as the nuclear envelope, which is surrounded by the endoplasmic reticulum. For now, just know that the endoplasmic reticulum are just sacs and channels. The nuclear envelope also has what we call nuclear pores that are large enough to allow proteins and ribosomes into and out of the nucleus. Now let's talk a little bit about ribosomes. These are what we refer to as one of many types of organelles. Similar to how we as animals and creatures have organs inside our bodies, cells have organelles inside theirs. Ribosomes are organelles that are composed of proteins and rRNA. They can be found mostly attached to the endoplasmic reticulum, as well as a few free-floating ones in the cytoplasm. The ribosome is where protein synthesis occurs, and the difference between those attached to the endoplasmic reticulum and those free-floating are the different destinations of the protein it synthesizes. The endoplasmic reticulum, also known as the ER, consists of a rough ER, which has ribosomes attached to it. Proteins produced by these ribosomes follow into the center of the ER. Some become transport proteins on the cell membrane, and some are packed up and sent to the Golgi apparatus for exiting the cell. There's also a smooth endoplasmic reticulum smooth ER. It doesn't have any attached ribosomes to it. Smooth ER creates phospholipids for the cell membrane, and it also helps produce testosterone. Another thing is, it's also involved with detoxification of substances in the liver. The endoplasmic reticulum generally forms transport vesicles for bulk transports. One destination is to the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus looks sort of like a cross-section of a stack of pancakes. Here is where proteins go to get their carbohydrate attachments, making them glycoproteins and glycolipids to be sent to the cell membrane. You can say that the Golgi apparatus handles the processing, the packaging, and the secretion of important substances and compounds. One final part of the endomembrane system is the lysosomes. These lysosomes are membrane sacs that are produced by the Golgi apparatus, and inside these sacs are hydrolytic enzymes. 
the lysosomes usually fuse with vesicles containing substances from the outside that are taken in by endocytosis. The enzymes mix with these substances and digest these substances into smaller particles. These lysosomes may also break down the cell's own parts in a process known as autodigestion. And you probably guessed it, but the pathogen-fighting white blood cells are rich in lysosomes. And there's a serious condition called Tay-Sachs disease in which the person lacks lysosomal enzymes. Undigested substances collect into their nerve cells, leading to developmental problem and ultimately death at an early age. Well, that's all for today. If you like my video, please like, subscribe, and share.